tonight, let's carry ourselves on a larger cloud that comes off with the inspiration. Let's welcome Daniel Apia to connect us to the world of inspiration. And that starts the award real good. Let's welcome Mr. Daniel Apia. Do we have some passionate premiership fans and supporters in here? Oh, blues, reds, whites, greens. Do you know we have some strategies from the premiership that project managers are using to execute and manage projects in our time? Ladies and gentlemen, permit me to introduce myself briefly. My name is Daniel Apia. I represent Dream Focus International, which is a motivational and inspirational organization, and we are taking motivation to a next level. Self-introduction is very important. These days, if you are not very careful, it will make you or, or make you. Just the past general elections, the president was in Ododododio to introduce his candidate for the parliamentary elections. And the candidate was Nilante Banaman. And the incumbent was Nilante Vanderpoy. So the president stood in front of the crowd. And for those of you who are conversant with Ghanaian politics, Ododododio is one of the hot spots. So the president stood right behind his candidate and introduced him to the constituency. And you know our Ghana folks, majority of them came from the villages and then those fishermen and a few you know, people within the constituency gathered. And all they wanted to hear was who we should vote for. So all the campaign promises and the big English and the GDP and all those things didn't make sense to them. They just wanted to know who we should vote for. Then the president mistakenly introduced the incumbent who is actually in opposition. So he said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to introduce our candidates. I want you to all vote for Nilante Vanderpoy. Then he actually said, no, no, Nilante Banaman. And then the people, knowing he is the MP, started jubilating and they all left. Then the man was standing right beside the president and he said, it's Nilante Banaman. It's Banaman. He said, yay! Then I'm okay. By the time he corrected himself, the people had left. Whatever happened to Neil and Tebanaman, I'm sure if you visit the ladies' saloon, you will know more about what happened to him after the elections. Ladies and gentlemen, these days, if you miss out on entertainment news, like what I just shared, or you miss out on political news, religious news, or even sometimes news on projects, management. The best place to get this information is to visit the ladies' saloon. A few weeks ago, I was with my wife in the saloon, and then I overheard some of the ladies conversing. And I was busily on my phone, but I was eavesdropping. So one lady said, hey, this premiership is very, very romantic, pal. And then one lady said, hey, Sister Nye. So I was like, what is going on here? So I looked up and I realized there was a premiership game that was ongoing. And the ladies were so excited and joined the game. And that was what came out from one of the ladies, that the premiership is very romantic. So I overheard them saying that one lady asked her that, why do you say that? And I said, oh, look at, listen to the commentary. And then if you see some of the names that are displayed, Macy Mount and Woodbridge and nice, nice names. See, so that makes it very romantic. 
So I said, I, I think these ladies have a point. Because if you listen to the commentary, you hear things like Liverpool playing from left to right, Jordan Henderson, captain of the side tonight, crosses a long one into the goal area of Everton. He finds Seydoumani. Seydoumani takes on his man. He finds Mo Salah. Mo Salah is best at this and Mo Salah puts a goal in. The Egyptian magician, the two-time African footballer of the year, he's done it again. He is a delight to watch in the 18 box. And this some of the things that you hear. Very nice and romantic. And then when you come to the legends, Yano, our people, you hear things like, referee, referee Azagodo, class three referee from Sogakope, Wabona Bendi Akensi and Ashesu, referee Sesen, and listen to some of their pronunciation. Lion Andreas Melsi. Lion Andreas Kwabena Melsi. Akola Bobo. Hey! Eden then Ekosui. Agropamane Swaya King 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 King. Hey! Then Ekosu. Then all of a sudden, they will stop the commentary and you go like, Yemfa Asidama Yabuafo. MTN. MTN, see everywhere you go. Don't be a Mugu. Don't be a Mugu. IPMC. Also, with the phone, can cannot you see? Free phones. Then you will be wondering whether you are listening to commentary or it's an advert or what is going on here. So I'm sure many of you will agree with the ladies at the salon that indeed the premiership is very romantic. Peter K., who is a consultant project manager for the English Premiership, has introduced and created standards and systems which are sustainable and beneficial to everyone, regardless of your political divide, regardless of race, regardless of your color, regardless of gender. That is how come even ladies in Ghana enjoy the premiership. And I'm sure ladies everywhere in this world also enjoy the premiership just because standards and systems have been put in place. And when I talk of standards and systems, I mean high standards so that generations will come and pick up from there. We don't need the funding parties or the owners of the project or even government to dictate to them that you need to do it a particular way. We need it this way because we want to commission this for election. Then we compromise on quality. We compromise on cost. We blow the budget just because you are being dictated to. So project managers of our time we also need to learn from Peter K, who is managing the premiership. Let's put systems and high standards in place, which is going to be beneficial to everyone, regardless of where you are coming from. Then again, the work breakdown structure is very effective. Work breakdown structure, delegation of authority, delegation of roles and responsibilities. These are the things that are happening in the premiership for you to enjoy. Whenever I hear there is going to be a big game, the first thing I look out for is the time. 13 hours, 15 hours, 17 hours, and they start on time. I have never in the history of my football experience, never ever have I sat behind my screen and the game didn't start on time because systems are in place. Delegation of responsibilities. People are working. But when you come to the legends, 
Recently, I watched a game at the Accra Sports Stadium. They said the game was going to start at 7. Because of the rush and all that, I got there by 5. And thankfully, I was able to get in by 6.45. The game was supposed to start at 7. As at 8, the referee just walked to the pitch. And I don't know what the referee was doing. He went to the first um, goal post and he went to inspect the net. He shook the whole thing and then he ran to the opposite side. He did the same thing. He touched the post. He touched the bar, shaking everything. I said, what's going on here? We need to start the game. 8.15 before the game started. And I was wondering. I watched Chelsea and Manchester City. And the game was extremely good. I mean, they started on time. 15 minutes before the start of the game, the players came to the pitch. They did the usual warm-up. I said, wow. 15 minutes before the start of the game. And then the referee also came in five minutes before. They exchanged the penalties and all that. And there was nothing like going to inspect the goalpost because systems are in place. It's someone's duty. It is someone's duty to inspect all those things. And when the game in Ghana started, 20 minutes into the game, there was blackout. It took them extra 20 minutes to resume play. I said, why can't we always do the same thing? We need to put systems and standards in place. If you want to put on the generator as a backup, you do that, automatic switch off and all that. But we always assume things will go well. But in our world of project management, we always need to have a second look. You always have to plan for the alternatives. Failure mode. Always have to have alternatives and options so we don't experience some of these things. And then we also have effective accountability. Effective accountability. Peter K., this is a huge job. I'm sure a lot of people enjoy the premiership worldwide. So if he misses out on one deliverable, guess what is going to happen? The whole world is going to be on his neck. So as a consultant, he holds people accountable. He makes sure the focus is on performance. There is no room for excuses. Because if you mess things up, my head and my neck will be on the line. So project managers of our time, we need to hold people accountable. Because if someone doesn't do their work, it is going to affect the project. We shouldn't always sit back and go like, well, this is Ghana, Ghana time. We are moving from that narrative People are taking things for granted because it's Ghana. If you find yourself in Peter K's shoes, are you going to also tell them because you are from Ghana, things should go wrong? I believe you will not do that. And then finally, full ownership. Full ownership. Let's take the job like it ours. Sometimes when people are working for you, they'll go like, well, this is government. I can't carry the government on my shoulders. But someone is depending on you to bring a live game so they will enjoy. It's entertainment. And these days, everything that is trending is about entertainment. Everything that is trending. Project management awards is not going to trend as much as a VGMA Awards because that is entertainment. So we can also make our stories and our events trend when we do things right. When we handle projects, 
Let's ensure we start on time. Let's hold people accountable. The work breakdown structure, delegation of authority. Don't carry everything on your shoulders. Get competent people, hardworking people to partner you to deliver. So ladies and gentlemen, tonight, I want to give you one task or have one request. This coming weekend, there is going to be a big game. Manchester City and Leicester City. So I want to commission everyone here as a project manager for that particular game. What are you going to do to ensure that that game starts on time? That the referee doesn't come to the pitch and go around inspecting the goalpost and the net and all that. And finally, the team that you'll be working with, how are you going to ensure that the team will deliver? So that wherever you are, even in the ladies' salon, people can also comment about it and then check you as a romantic project manager. Thank you so much. Daniel, at some point it felt like comedy and then it was admonition and then it went into lecture and then some inspiration there. Let's put our hands together for Daniel Appiah.